Nice. And now she's all nice and snug. You can see the backside where the oil pump is driven by the oil pump drive shaft. Also, because I interpolated this bore here, it is actually pretty average. And I'm also not quite sure how round it is. But I do have a bit of trouble placing this in here, so we'll see. We'll give it a quick measure. So the target dimension was 115 millimeters, and that's not too bad considering. I had a bit of a dumb dumb moment and decided how about I just take the o-ring off and see how it fits and as you can see it fits perfectly so there are no real issues there although it was only when I finally managed to place this data on I noticed this nice little cock up So that's a little bit unfortunate and I didn't even need to remove all of that material in the first place. That leaves us with a couple of options. So what we're going to do with this top hole is probably fill it up with some needed, you know, that play-doh that sits like steel sort of shit. Um, well I could just send it. I mean it doesn't need to be that tight of a uh, thread and it'll probably work out just fine. And that might pull this down just enough. And then you only really need one screw to hold it. And it'll be pretty tight with that o-ring in there. And it's just to stop it rotating essentially. So I'll just go ahead and try pop this in here with the o-ring installed. And as you can see, I'm applying a decent amount of force. And she won't budge. And what you can see the whole way around is the o-ring just caught on the edge of the bore. Option one is to grab this piece and take about 0.3 of a millimeter off the OD. We can do that by making a little shoulder up in the lathe about this size. Transition fit into there, push on this side with the tailstock and then bang off 0.3 and make the o-ring groove the same amount deeper about 0.3 and then this should fit on nice and easy. Or vice versa, I could set up the boring head, locate the case on the mill, use my Budjo edge finder, to try get it central, and then try bore it concentric. So what would you do? I think I'm gonna go with banging this in the lathe as I haven't used my boring head yet and it would be a pretty sad time this late in the project to fuck up the cases. It's around here you get to see that I cocked up the first diameter, so I had to do a retest and then remove all the evidence of the first mistake. So there is no way of holding this in the lathe without a great deal of faff. This piece here will always hit the cross slide because the um, yeah because it needs to be mounted this way, and I can't get the compound slide across far enough to machine in here. So we're gonna do what I couldn't be bothered doing. I always harp on about being lazy, but. We're going to crank out the boring head and use that for the first time. So I'll just be controlling that manually, but we'll see how we go. So here it is, everything I need. They even supplied three different Allen keys. I don't know how far I can go with this. It might 
surely it'll max out. The diameter we are boring is 115 millimeters, so this will need to be offset at least, what's that, 57 and a half ish. This will need to be out to at least there. Um, this might not be happening with this setup. So the initial plan to machine this down didn't really work out because it didn't fit in my lathe. So the next thing I was going to do was set up my boring head way outside of its range of adjustment to bore the hole 0.2 millimeters bigger. But it was a pain in the ass to set up and I'm kind of glad it didn't work out because I measured the standard crankcases and the hole was the same size. So the next thing to do was add a chamfer and the o-ring should fit in just fine. And this is how I programmed the CNC mill to cut that chamfer. It required some quick modeling and some fiddling around in the cam side of Fusion 360. So I'm just going to be using this as coolant and I'm just going to pre-spray the part like I would if I was engraving something small as it's such a light cut and I don't need to be spraying shit everywhere. Now you can see this has a chamfer cut the whole way around and I was quite worried when fitting this as it was still a very tight fit and it wouldn't press home. So what I did was grab the stop crankcase and confirm that this was no different. So it was time to use some brute force. So in the end, all that was required was a little bit of a chamfer and some brute force. So the next task is to dummy assemble the engine. This is so I can manufacture and fit the cam chain tensioner. Next up, we have some studs to install. And we'll try and fit this piece in, although that might mean we have to remove this here. The cam guide sprocket or whatever it's called.
So to get any meaningful tension with this setup, I needed to run both the solid guide and the stock roller guide. So it was around this point I realized that no, this was not the one. This wasn't the master stroke. This wasn't the final plan. I couldn't see these guides lasting very long and at a pinch I might have been able to start the engine but I could see this going catastrophically wrong. And the answer was in front of me the whole time. So I found this on the chassis jig motor under the bench. So what I'm going to do is hit it with the angle grinder and carry on this radius. Now here's the finished part. So it's going to go in here something like this. So I'm going to have to remove probably this. This is redundant now. So I'll be able to machine all this away. And I'll machine away a portion of uh, this here. As it's not actually doing anything. I only need half of it to stop the bearing falling, um, pushing through. I should be able to run this. Now what I'll do is I'll weld a nut here, probably like so, and when that nut's welded I'll be able to put a little jacking screw in and push against here with another nut on it so I can lock it and it will just tension against this Those glasses don't have to bother. <laughs> <laughs>